fit for at the moment. You have to remember, I think, that he has been beaten on his only attempt to go beyond a mile and a half, and there must be stamina darts, I think, if the ground is testing at Doncaster. He had a good win, it's true, in the Elicidon stakes, but the conditions of the that race did suit him very well. Mars Miles, the runner-up, for instance, was giving £13, was beaten four lengths. I think Watermill's the one they've got to beat. I don't want to put him down too much, but I don't think he's very good value at the odds. Now, what about the other fancied horses in the race? Well, the bookings make a three-horse race, really, like Cavalry, the other ones, and Lancastrian is the other one. Now, Lancastrian has good form in France, and his chance must be respected if the ground is soft. And Light Cavalry certainly ran a very good ledger trial when he was second in the Great Voltageur at York. But I think my selection is going to be Ramian. He's a lightly raced Irish trade horse who won the BMW Nijinsky Stakes before putting up a really good effort in the Irish Sweeps Derby. We've now got a chance to see Ramian then. Here he is towards the outside with the white noseband. Halloran is even further behind and so is Nikolai. But as they come now towards the final two furlongs, Turnabout still in command from Master Willie in second place. Willie Carson now gets a run through on Prince B. After these comes Ramian, and as they race now towards the final so long and a half, Prince B coming storming through, but still has two or three legs to find on Turnabout, who looks as though he could make all the running in the Irish Street Derby, racing up towards the line, and it's still Turnabout from Prince B, within third place Ramian, for the favourite master Willie, the reader making late progress, but nothing's going to catch Turnabout, up the line, Turnabout wins the Irish Street Derby, Prince B is second and Ramian third. So, Ramey and your selection there. Now, what about uh, another outsider? Because I know you like to go for a long-priced outsider. Well, I do, David. That's quite true. And I think you could do a lot worse than Prince Roland. His stamina has to be taken a bit on trust. But he won at Epsom, York and Chepstow before he took on Mumba Masquerade in the Mecca Bookmaker Scottish Derby at Ayr on July 19. And almost by coincidence, we've got a chance now to see Prince <laughs> Roland in action. Here he is in the lead, the horse with the white blaze. And Mumba Masquerade really being stoked up there by Bruce Raymond, trying hard to get on turn. In fact, the two leaders are now under pressure. They pass a furlong from home marker, but it's Steve Corson still on Prince Roland, who has the advantage. They've got about 100 yards still to go, and it's Prince Roland's going to come up and win the Scottish Derby, and being chased home by Mumba Masquerade in third place will be Sir Tristram, followed... And Prince Roland then, John Tyrrell's selection as the best outsider for the St. Ledger, but his winning tip is Ramian, and that once again is the 3.05 at Doncaster on Saturday. Welcome to Southport, a good and varied little extravaganza for you tonight, including football and how Southampton slumped to their third away defeat in a row. And racing the biggest gamble in the history of the sport, how the bookmakers of Britain stand to lose two and a half million pounds. And just in case you think all that sounds like a load of hot air, we'll be talking to one of Britain's foremost hot air balloonists about this spectacular and colourful sport. Later, but we open with racing and the great autumn double, the Cambridgeshire and the Cesarewitch. Now, the favourites to win the races, Tender Heart and Al Kuwait, have both been so heavily backed that if they both do win, the bookmakers will lose some two and a half million pounds. The Cambridgeshire is at Newmarket on Saturday. The favourite here will be Tender Heart. He can be beaten, and he was beaten by Fine Son at York in July. But just look at this staggering acceleration from Tender Heart in the closing stages. They've got just over three furlongs to go, and the race really opening up with Lasca Floco in the lead from Highway, Fine Sun, Zach Village on the inside rails, Masked Marble just behind them, just over two furlongs to go, Greenwood Star improving up on the outside, it's Masked Marble and Greenwood Star on the very wide outside, Masked Marble, Greenwood Star from Fine Sun and Zach Village on the far side, then comes Tender Heart finishing quite strongly, just over a furlong out, and it's Fine Sun, Masked Marble, Zach Village and Tender Heart coming inside the final furlong. On fine son in the lead, Mars Marvel in second place, Tender Heart is closing with every stride, going up the line, fine son, but Tender Heart closing, fine son, Tender Heart, Mars Marvel, second village up the line, fine son, just the winner from Tender Heart in second, second village and Mars Marvel in a photo for third and fourth, then came Greenwood. So, can Tender Heart go one better on Saturday in the Cambridgeshire, and will the bookies lose two and a half million pounds? With me now, John Tyrrell, the man who knows. John, Tender Heart holds the key in the first place, so can he win the Cambridgeshire on Saturday? 
Well, a first-rate chance, Fred, I think it must be said, because before the Magnet Cup, which we've just seen, he won the Royal Hunt Cup back in June, with Baronet only fifth. And at Ascot last Thursday, with the weights adjusted, of course, in Baronet's favour, so they ought to theoretically have run the dead heat, they ran to a short head, and Baronet was the victor on that occasion. So I think he's the same horse as he was back in June. If that's the case, I think he's going to win. The odds are too short for me to go for him, because I don't like that kind of thing, as you know. But I think I must say, while we're talking about short odds, that if anyone fancies Al Q Wade separately for the Cesarevich, they ought to back him now, because if Tender Heart does go in on Saturday, and I think he probably will, then Q8 is going to be unbackable for the Cesarevich after Saturday. So the bookies then you're saying could lose their two and a half million pounds, but you, as you say, never ever tip favourites. So what about one or two others to look out for? Well, I like Majestic Star, an improving three-year-old, the kind of horse that often wins this race. He's got seven stone 12 in the handicap, and that's Alan Bond, his jockey's exact riding weight. Last time out, he was second to King James at Kempton, and before that, he advertised his chances over nine furlongs, and that's the Cambridgeshire distance, of course, in the ICI petrol handicap at Riffin back in August. So as they come now inside the last three furlongs, it's still Hasut in the lead from Majestic Star, making a run on the outside. Is Mark Birch on Caroline Lamb. He comes right up to join Hasut. Majestic Star between those two. Then comes Swan Upping and Peter the Butcher. But they're coming now towards the final quarter mile, and it's Caroline Lamb who now takes up the running from Majestic Star. But Majestic Star is still running well. Then coming through on the far side is Running Rocket, and Hasut now dropping away. Then just after leading for it's edging, and then comes Peter the Butcher. But they hit the final furlong. And it's Majestic Star now in the lead from Caroline Lamb. But Running Rocket continues to try hard to get through on the far side. But there's no opening there on the far side for Running Rocket. Majestic Star therefore is the winner from Running Rocket and Caroline Lamb. Caroline Lamb just second. So, Majestic Star then, one of your selections, but the field is big enough and rich enough to, to have more than one selection, so what about another couple of good-priced horses? Yes, four places to fill, Fred, even if Tender Heart does fill one of them, so I'm going to go for three. Uh, Prince's Gate is my next selection. He's possibly a blot on the handicap, this chap, with only seven stone ten to carry. He's got good recent winning form over a mile, but the point is, Freddie, he runs as though he'll appreciate a return to longer distances, and he has won, of course, at longer distances. He'd like a bit of rain and slightly softer ground, but I think he'll go well. So that's Prince's Gate as well as Majestic Star. And one other? I like Sayer. He's a 25 to 1 shot, a good, consistent horse. He's had a good season, acts on any ground. New market train, got 8.12 to carry. That's quite a burden, but uh, he could be value for the frame, I think. Yeah. So that's three for the field you've given us, and we'll remind viewers of those in just a moment. But I tell you what, I noticed that Fine Blue is also going in the Cambridgeshire. Fine Blue has given us such marvellous service in past days. He certainly has. An old friend of ours goes back to our mystery tips today, doesn't he? Back in 1977. Written by Steve Cawthon. I talked to Peter Macon at Bath Races a week ago about this chap and his prospects. He was going to retire. He had a very poor season, although he has won a race. But at Newbury, two Saturdays ago, he came right back, showed his old sparkle right back to his best form, beat the Cambridgeshire entries in that race, and so Peter's going to let him take his chance. Nothing would please me more to see him win for Peter and for Fred Searle, his owner-trainer. Yes, I hope he's there. So thanks again to Fine Blue, and thanks again to you, John Tyrrell. Thank you, Fred. So John Tyrrell's three for the field for the William Hill Cambridgeshire on Saturday at 3 o'clock are Majestic Star, Prince's Gate and Sayer. And John will be previewing the second leg of the autumn double, the Cesarewicz, in two weeks' time. Well, now it's on to football and the early season... ...equally uh, successful. In fact, it really depends whether the group that are racing with you are going to go with you, because you can't win a race like the Cambridge Show. You're very lucky to if you win it on your own. Uh, that's Hall Knight cantering down there. He was fourth at kept top weight, carrying nine stone 12, so he's giving nine pounds or more to all the others. Fourth at Kempton over a mile and three when Smoke Singer was third. He's held on that form by Smoke Singer. They finished behind more light. He was third, beaten four lengths by Watermill and Mars Marvel at Goodwood. Uh, he just really hasn't quite got into top gear this uh, year. He had some good form last year. He ran a cracker and a champion, in fact. I think he was placed as far as I can remember. But he hasn't really got into his uh, top gear so far this year. Going down fast enough and well enough anyway. Number two, top weight, Paul Knight. Number ten, that's one of the last to leave. Oh, we've seen him actually, that's fine blue. Whereas he must be in front of me here somewhere, I can't see him. He's one of the last, in fact, to leave the paddock and we've already talked about him. Twenty-five and ten, in fact, we've talked about both. There's, along with him is uh, Haleo, the Epsom challenger. Number ten, fine blue. Trained by Peter Makey in this one at Marlborough and ridden by Steve Cawthon. He's a horse and in Tau, there's a seven-year-old son of French vine. As they come down to start, Ken, that's one Fleet Street followed by Easter Sun. 
One Fleet Street we've not seen, nor have we seen Easter Sun. Oh, if One Fleet Street, I beg your pardon, we have seen, but Easter Sun, if we can drop back, we haven't seen. There he is. Easter Sun, uh, he's a colt by Bastino, a three-year-old carrying eight stone four, so as the youngsters go, he's got the top weight for a three-year-old, and he's had a pretty successful season. Uh, Last time out, he was third at Sandown at the end of August, behind One Fleet Street, beaten about three lengths, and on that form, in fact, he is held by One Fleet Street. Uh, he was a game second to world leader on the July course when he was beaten ahead, and he was a winner here over a mile and a half, in fact, so there's absolutely no doubts at all about him getting the course. That's number 12, Easter Sun. Well, he beat Le Soleil ahead at Kempton early in September. He was twice behind Tender Heart before that at York, and at Royal Ascot, but he won the Irish Sweeps Lincoln in great style. That's number 22. Can he make the double King's Ride? And now we have more betting. It's just come into the betting at 20 to 1. The favourite, Tender Heart, now 9 to 2 from 5 to 1. One Fleet Street steady at 9s and Prince's Gate at 10s. Easter Sun is 11 to 1 from 12s and Pulse Rate in two points, 12 to 1 from 14 to 1. Majestic Star goes to 14 to 1 from 12s, and Sacrilege also at 14 to 1, as is Hall Knight from 16s. Atlantic Boy is 16 to 1 from 14s. A Cannon King and King's Ride both at 20s, 25 to 1 bar those. Trotting down the old man of the party, the eight year old Baronet. He won it in 1978, a tremendous feat if he could win it again, having missed a year. Uh, he's carrying nine stone three, gradually coming nicely into form. He's beat Tender Heart by a head in rather a battle of tactics last Saturday at uh, Ascot, and there's very little in it at the weights between them this afternoon. Uh, before that, he'd run a good fifth to Kilroy Hawk at Doncaster, and way back in the early part of the season, he won. Uh, it was at Kempton, in fact, uh, when he won in great style that day, too. He's a Winner of this race in 1978, so trying for a unique double, the eight-year-old Baronet number three. Number nine sideways on is Smoke Singer, one of the outsiders, a horse by Crooner. He's a five-year-old trained by Paul Kellaway here at Newmarket. He was six behind Welsh Chanter at Goodwood in the middle of September. Uh, Hall Knight was fourth when he was third to Kempton at Moor Light, and on that form he certainly holds Hall Knight. He had a fairly busy but unsuccessful this season this year. Number nine, Smoke Singer. Cardinal Flower with his back to us with that diamond. A coat by Sharpen out out of Ixia, three-year-old carrying eight stone two. Well, he was fourth at Wolverhampton when Cannon King beat on edge and they meet on the same terms here. So on that form, he appears to be fairly safely held. He was a winner himself at Yarmouth when he beat Royzer ahead. That's number 13, Cardinal Flower, trained by Gavin Pritchard Gordon here as his majestic star. Uh, at Newmarket. Number 13, Cardinal Flower. And I think we've seen them all, before, except for Pulse Strait. There he is, Pulse Strait, number seven, Northern Challenger. Uh, this one is a gelding by Prince Tenderfoot, a four-year-old, carrying eight stone ten, and an impressive air winner on soft ground over Amber Vale. That was his third run of the season, so he's hit form at the right time. Uh, whatever he does today, watch him over hurdles this winter. I'm sure he's going to be successful over hurdles. I think the problem with him today is the ground is a, a lot firm. He's got a tremendous stride on him. Whether he's got the ability to quicken, which you're going to have to have today when they go out of the dip, dip remains to be seen. Anyway, John Oakes, he thinks he has, so all uh, luck to number seven, Northern Challenger, Pulse Strait. Now, let's fill you in on the draw whilst they're milling around behind the stalls. Actually, before we do that, we've got more betting. More money for Tender Heart, now 4 to 1 from 9 to 2. And Prince's Gate is 9 to 1 from 10s. One Fleet 